when I was there, it was carnage. Like some of the river was only as deep as that table and we're flying off zip lines yeah. and spinning off the edge. Like my job was just to give out as much whiskey as possible. So I was using it to like disinfect people's wounds and stuff like on their heads because people were coming out drunk and just be like, oh yeah, yeah. And their heads just split open. <laughs> Welcome to the Fruiting Body Podcast with your host, Brendan. Today, we have an absolute legend of a guest. It is Gary Butler. This is the Roaming Cook. Um, we'll be leaving all the links and uh, information so you can check out his YouTube channel. Um, it's a type of travel food vlog, vlog that's taking on food tours around Thailand. Um, I'll let you find out more about that. And also, we're going to dig deep into his story and what he's all about. As we do in the Fruiting Body podcast, we're connecting people of their journey, what they did before Thailand, what brought them here, and what they're doing. Um, I don't think we're going to touch too much on your past. There's a better uh, um, video or interview about that from Pete from Tyrish Times. It really focuses more on like uh, Gary's backstory and what brought him to Thailand. So I would suggest go uh, watch that interview. I'll leave a link in the description. And this one's going to be focusing more on Gary and what's going on here. Um, don't forget, we're almost at 5,000 subscribers. Like, subscribe. We have huge podcasts coming out. This one's probably our biggest. <laughs> I know <laughs> Gary's like, anyway, we can't share too much. Uh, like, subscribe. Help us out in the algorithm. We're almost there. And I uh, hope you enjoy the podcast. Again, this is a two-part episode. So I'm a bit long-winded here. I need to put a checklist up there mm. of say this, this, and that. Two-part episode. This one, if you're watching, is on Tuesday. We've aired it at 6 p.m. Bangkok time. The second part will come out at, on Thursday at 6 p.m. Bangkok time. So, without further ado, Gary Butler. Hello, my friend. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Try to hit so many points. Thanks, first, that was thanks the best, a lot. Best intro I've ever had. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, it's a gorgeous day today, and I'm sure oh, you've amazing. had a wonderful weather in Phuket. Brilliant. brilliant. I've never yeah. ever known weather like it. So. Yeah. My God, what day did you get here? And did you land in Phuket? We got here on. Sunday afternoon and it has not stopped yet. Really. I've you so I know you've been here about six, seven years, probably the same as seven, yeah. Just coming up to seven now. Yeah. December, yeah. Same, same uh, as you, right? Mine's, yeah, April two thousand sixteen. Yeah, yeah. But I've never seen weather like this. No, never. And what was crazy is actually it was okay for like I didn't mind the the, the rainy season, let's say, because it kind of dumped and it was gone. Yeah, 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 but yeah. This one it's like holy shit. So the best thing or the worst thing is, like I said to you off camera, like my whole family are here. And yeah. they've, like, uh, my sister-in-law and her boyfriend have never been to Thailand. Well, my sister-in-law has. Her boyfriend's never been. So he watches all my videos. He's getting all excited. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've just non-stop telling him how hot it is here. It's going to be great. And every day he's like, oh, right, yeah, it just rains non-stop here, right? And I'm trying to tell him, like, this is the worst weather I've ever seen. Ever. Ever. But I had a taxi driver yesterday was telling me this is the worst weather they've had for 50 years. If, like he said, ne he's never That's known crazy, anything like man. it. So. Yeah, we're lucky because, so we're on Surin Beach and then we have mm. a water treatment plant in front. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. That who knows, the some some government made some money <laughs> on that. But you know, it, fuck, it worked. It worked. <laughs> it worked. This whole street, nothing got flooded. Oh, really? So congratulations, government. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> no, they did really well. We were super happy. Like, everyone's like, it's flooded everywhere. I'm looking out the door. I'm like, ah, oh, we're okay. Right. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're doing good. good. How, wh when are you guys going back to Bangkok? We go back to Bangkok Sunday, again, Sunday, yes, we're here a week. Oh, so oh, yeah. his Phuket trip is completely... For me, though, to be honest with you, for me, it's actually, I actually don't mind it because I'm usually so hot and I'm walking around all the time. I actually don't mind it at all, just chilling out for a few days. I've been forced to... I haven't actually been able to do any work since I got here. I've not filmed anything. Like, I haven't been able to do anything. So it's actually been nice in that respect. Plus, we've got the kids with us. They, they just love in life, so. Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming, like, you would go to Phuket Town. There, that's where the food, I mean, Phuket that's where Town, the food yeah. tours are. Yeah, yeah. You saw the pictures, though. Exactly, right? right. So day one, um, I was like, oh, when, as soon as we land, I'm going to go into Phuket Town. And then I look at um, a friend of mine, Benjamin, Phuket local Thai, if anyone wants to look at her. Can you just push the mic up a little oh, bit sorry, towards yeah. you? There you go. And then. Uh, I saw her go. pictures, and it's literally, like, the clock tower. That looks like someone superimposed like a yeah. C in front of it. So, yes, yeah, so I haven't been down there yet. So, yeah, 
Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It looks like it drained out today a bit. We kind of took the back roads. I was over mm. at the, the Bangtao Muay Thai gym and then okay. went back around there. And uh, he, Hans, the other day, he was trying to go there from Blue Tree area and it was basically a lake. Blue Tree's a write off. My that God. Is, that is like, yeah, it's like a little gully. Well, that's the. Well, if you want all the Phuket news, go watch out uh, Tim Newton today. I mean, that's probably yeah. better for the the weather weather updates. But here, it's, it's crazy, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully, it's gone soon, and hopefully, yeah. this is the end of it. Um, let's take a step back now. Again, like I said, if you want like a really in depth interview of Gary's background, and uh, go watch out Pete uh, from Tyrish Times, Tyrish Times on YouTube. You can check that out. There's. I watched the first one. I didn't watch the second one. Um, he, uh, if he's watching, he, d- he didn't put the second one out. So. No, the, there's two on there. I saw. Is there? Yeah, there's two. There's two videos on there. Maybe one's not. Oh, uh, maybe I didn't watch the second one then. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Like, go like, subscribe, <laughs> go sm- leave some yeah. comments. Um, can you kind of give us that that fast track story of yes. what brought you to Thailand? How did you, like what actually drove you to come here? Right. So I'll, I'll um, obviously the food. So I'll give you a sort of condensed version. So I'd started to cook Thai food at home quite extensively and I uh, was sort of thinking, I just wanted to know if I'd cooked it right, basically. So I typed into Google one day, best food in Thailand. It came up with Chiang Mai and Khao Soi. I just booked a flight from England, from London to Chiang Mai, flew to Chiang Mai. On the way there, I'm going like, what am I doing here on my own? Best thing I ever did. So Got there, tried the food. Obviously, I wasn't cooking it right, but, you know, we've rectified that. Um, yeah, fell in love with the food, the people, the culture. I did a little slow, but I was, th- I was meant to be there for like, I was meant to be in Chiang Mai for about 10 days. And I think I was away for about seven weeks altogether. Like I ended up getting a, s- this is how ignorant I was though. I didn't even know where Lao was. So some girls went to me, oh, we're going to get the slow boat to Lao. And I was like, yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, book me up. Like I'm thinking it's just down the river. To, so I didn't even know what it was. So um, quick crash course. I did a few weeks in Laos, came back, and I've been coming to Thailand ever since, probably two or three times a year, just for food, um, ever since. Then in 2016, I started a like a written food blog with Thai recipes back when people actually used to read. And um, yeah, so I said to my wife, oh, I'm going to go to, I started it in London, and I said, I'm going to go to Bangkok for a week, do some uh, research and stuff. And uh, she wasn't going to come, but obviously then last minute she was like, oh, I want a trip to Thailand. So when she ended up coming, she brought her CV, her resume, you might call it. Um, yeah. She's a teacher and she got a job and that's the condensed version, basically. So, And as you're getting into like uh, these, we would call them more like uh, walking food tours type, mm. of, type of content. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you give a little bit of a history background of your channel? How did that come together and the evolution of what it is today? So basically... Um, I was only really, I used to do like an Instagram just to push people towards my food blog. And then um, I basically just got lazy, really. So my, the, the, the reason it's called The Roaming Cook, because people keep asking me, well, why don't you cook anything on your channel? Why do you call yourself The Roaming Cook? Because the recipe blog was called The Roaming Cook. And the idea behind it was I would go around, meet locals, eat at their restaurants, and then recreate the dishes at home. I did that, but I just left the like recreating the dishes off. So um, I'd walk around more and more every day, um, get to know more and more people. And yeah, just used to write about it. I never I never wanted to be on camera ever. I never wanted to, like, had no aspirations to be a presenter. I didn't want a YouTube channel, I didn't want anything. Um, I just did the videos every now and again to sort of push people towards the food blog. Oh, from Instagram? Yeah, from Instagram. Yeah. And I, I had a YouTube channel as well. I've had it for like six years, but I might, do a video and then like four months later do another video then two weeks later do one and then you know that that doesn't mm-hmm. work right so during the pandemic i thought oh, i'll take this a bit more seriously so i started posting twice a week and um I've, I've like missed out four years here but in those four years i've made a lot of friends I've, I've i've made a lot of sort of connections within the local community where i live in bangkok i don't know how well you know bangkok uh, I live in Tonbury, well. so I live west side of the river. Yeah, so my girlfriend downstairs, uh, she lives in Bangkok. She's actually, she might have left right now. Mm-hmm. She's flying back. She lives on the Icon Siam side. Yeah, and we were right. watching one of your videos uh, right before the podcast. She's like, there's a, like, right by the Icon Siam, she said, this is famous for food. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's why I moved there. Right? Okay. <laughs> Don't tell my wife this, but my wife got a job that side of the river. So I picked that street just for the food. Mm-hmm. Just so happened that she could get to work really easily from there as well, so... Made it look like I'd booked it, like 
just so she could get to work. But um, yeah, so I've made so many sort of connections and stuff. And then that's when the sort of idea of the DIY street food tours came in mm. during the pandemic. So I'd just go like pick like three or four in one area from like, not always, but ma mainly people's shops that I knew. And that you, so you could do them yourself sort of thing. And it just sort of snowballed from that. Yeah, I was listening to, uh, to the Full Send podcast and Kyle, I mean, everyone, most people kind of know these people mm. in, that, in that space. They're saying that um, what kind of drives them and motivates them is reading the comments and the positivity. Mm. And, and this gets them to go to that next level. And there's usually one video that they can always remember that kind of said, okay, I'm going to take this seriously. What was that on your channel that you're like, you know what, like... Um, We've got something here. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. I've got to give a shout out to Paddy Doyle. I don't know if you know Paddy yeah. Doyle. Paddy Doyley. Because actually, like one day, that it was sort of like a weird sort of like perfect storm. This one month, um, I'd done a video. I think it was like in Chinatown or something. And that got like more views than it usually would get. So I'm thinking. And just before that, I'd been a little bit like, this is going nowhere. You know, I was just having one of my little down moments that I have a lot. About once a month, so <laughs> I'm going. Oh, so I got a little boost from that, and then at the same time, loads of like I got an uh, un, like an unusual amount of traffic to my channel, and loads of comments saying, "Oh, Paddy sent me. Paddy sent me. I'm here from Paddy. I'm here from Paddy." I'm going. Who's Paddy? I know Paddy, but I didn't. I didn't even put two and two together. So it turned out he'd done a video where he like named like five of his favorite YouTubers that should have more views that don't, mm. and it just so happened I already had two hundred odd videos on my channel. So I got about I must have got about 6,000 subscribers from that overnight and the same week I'd just done a video with my son and it wasn't a planned video because I don't really like him in the videos but I was just it's a random one. I don't need to tell you this part but I just dropped my wife to the dentist basically and that happens to be in a street food area and I had my son so I said oh come on we'll go to that shop because mm -hmm. he likes noodles I'll do a video and it was quite a funny video and because my son's really pale and ginger like a lot of Thai people like him. So that went m mental for my my views. I got like a got like 100,000 views. You think from the Thai community? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. So 100,000 views on that. The shout out from Paddy. An old video of mine from Mark Wien's restaurant, for some reason, tailed on the back of another video and got like 60,000 views. And I also went to a town in northeast Thailand called Nakhon Panom. Mm -hmm. And I did my first live stream. And I think the whole of Nakhon Panom watched it. So like th this whole thing happened in the same week and that's when it was like, bang, oh wow, I can, I can actually do this for a living. Because the next three or four videos did really good numbers and yeah, it sort of took off from there. I mean, it did go down again though. So I was like, oh. Yeah, it's, you get that quick <laughs> high. I mean, it's, it's, oh. it's a, like so, you said, it's the perfect storm in that mm, sense. Yeah. Um, these, this community of, let's call them both, not just like uh Thai travel vloggers you you kind of I'm sure you have some competitors on your side that are doing these food tours as mm. well what is that community like in Bangkok do you guys get together quite often yeah I mean I actually know um quite a few people so when you say competitors it is uh -huh. I mean and I know some people that think like that but I personally don't like I don't I don't look at things like that so like I know s some people. I'm not naming names. Call them uh, in the, in your circle. In my in our in, space. In your space. Some people yeah. don't like to say do collaborations or whatever because they yeah. think you're going to take views from them or take subscribers. Whereas I know full well some people are just watching me because I might be the only person doing food, yeah. Mm. So they've got no one else to watch. But then I might introduce them to someone else. They might like them even more. They don't even like me. So they stop watching me. They stop watching them. I don't care mm. because at least I've got them to watch something about Thailand, and um. But generally speaking, uh, to answer your question without rambling on, um, yeah, the community is great in Bangkok. I've got a lot of friends. I've met a lot of friends um, through YouTube. And um, it's it's good because like meeting like-minded people, as you know, if you surround yourself with like-minded people, everyone's got kind of got the same goal. You can help each other out. Um, I didn't really, I didn't really have that. I didn't know anyone from YouTube. So before... Um, before my channel started to grow, I was in the mindset of like, oh no, I want to do everything myself. I'm not going to reach out to him. I'm not going to reach out to him. I'll do it all myself. I don't need anyone's help. But it's not just help you need with like views and stuff. You also need help with, the, when we said, when I said like, you know now after like a year, but before that, your views will suddenly drop. And then you're like, oh no, my, my channel's going to die. Mm. And you've got no one to talk to. Now I'll ring someone and they'll go, oh no, that's just normal. You know, it's January or whatever. Or, 
oh, that just happens. Our views went down this month as well. They'll go back up next month. So everyone kind of helps each other out in that way, which is which is really nice. Um, yeah, it yeah. seems like that Thai vlogger type of community um they they would have they were very close knit mm. especially during the let's call it that that current situation or I yeah guess, the old current i guess situation. it's the past <laughs> situation now right i guess putin, is it, uh, putin yeah, yeah, killed yeah. it apparently but <laughs> yeah yeah right. well, well someone said that to me here and i was like oh we don't really have that here we still got a little yeah, bit yeah, yeah it's the past situation <laughs> but it, a lot of those vloggers probably like patty uh, mm. definitely chris parker i mean they yeah. they were born from from um that situation, I just don't want to. I, I never know to use those words. Yeah, it's a situation. Yeah, we we'll right. call it that. And and from that, like, do you consider yourself part of like that to uh, that era that was kind of born from that? Uh, I don't actually know because a little bit because, like I said, sort of Paddy put me on. If you want to say that, um, but I'd already been doing it for so long and I'd already put in so much work. I'd say. I'd say that. Gave, I'd say the situation gave me the opportunity to take it more seriously because I was putting more time in. But even that would be an excuse because I could have put more time in before. But um, no, I wouldn't say, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that because I don't know. I kind of, mine was like, my big boom happened in like last November. So I was, I'd kind of hit the back end of it. So whereas they were all getting their views when people couldn't leave their house. Right. The, the lockdowns and stuff, if, if I remember correctly, had kind of, I think we're all talk do, about Do it. a lot of those vlog, vloggers, do they share that same narrative where they're saying like, probably a lot of the success was due to the fact that people couldn't come yeah. and they were living through their content like yeah, vicariously. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. And I think I, I think this is what I'm trying to explain to people as well, that um, this is why, again, why it's good to have like a little community because like views a year ago versus views now, right, you can't hold yourself to the same standard because a year ago yeah. no one could go out, no one could come to Thailand and no one was vlogging. Now every single couple with a with an iPhone or a Samsung... Anyone can do it. ...is vlogging. So like that, you, you can... Every day I'm bombarded with new people that are coming up on my feed. They're like they've got like ten subscribers. They're getting sixty thousand views on a Bangkok video. So you've got to think like that's taking views off of everyone. So you've got to kind of temper expectations. Well, you still have your niche in Thailand because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. much easier to be a Thai vlogger on on because you're going to the de destinations anyways. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Was there any inspiration you took on when you were getting started, guys like Mark Weens? Uh, well, not. Massively, my inspirations kind of come from, like I say before, I actually, and I mean this, I never wanted to, I, I never wanted to be in front of a camera. Yeah, no worries. Oh, we got some cut. Thanks. Hey, cheers. How's the dog? Are you taking off now to the airport? Okay. Well, listen, we'll see if the dog downstairs. I had to bring the dog on the last podcast because I, I saw the picture. I was kind of hoping yeah, I was going to get might, to hold it. He might come up. He, he, he's no, sorry, she. she. I think I just call all dogs here, but yes, yeah, same. <laughs> um, it's gender. Okay, sorry. Um, we Where are, did we, we come are, on to? Uh, like, what was I waffling on yeah, about? We are talking uh, j just about uh, your inspiration. I asked uh, about yeah, Mark yeah. Means. So actually, my inspiration, like I don't, um, I meant it. I don't ever want, I never wanted to be on camera. I always found it a little bit strange. Even with the Instagram and stuff, doing stories and stuff. Like I'm not from a particularly rough area in London, but growing up, you just would never tell someone where you were or where you, <laughs> what you were doing, like ever. So like to, to, to go from that to now, like people know where I am at all times is a bit strange. So I didn't have any inspiration as in travel vloggers or anything like that. Obviously, Mark, you're talking about Mark. Um, Mark's like the OG, he's like the original. Um, really nice guy as well. I've met him a few times. Yeah, really nice guy. But I wouldn't say he was an inspiration of mine. I'd say inspiration of mine are like old school sort of uh, English celebrity chefs. Or not, let's not say it's so much inspiration, but like, uh, when we're making content and we're making mm -hmm. a podcast, I'll look at the bigger podcast because See, I know they've I paid, they've the paid serious people to produce it. So, yeah, okay, yeah. let's try to follow what they're doing and whatever they're doing. Let's not question it too much. Yeah, There's a reason. Exactly so when you're right. making content, do you benchmark like people yeah. like Mark Weens to make uh, those I mean, decisions? Mark's a good one for me because Mark does the majority of stuff himself, yeah? Or his friends and his family, yeah? As far as I can tell, I don't want to speak for Mark, but... Um, but Mark's like a, I don't know what you'd call him, like an anomaly. Like, I don't, I'm not sure if he did that again, whether he would have 8 million subscribers. He might, he'd still have loads, but do you know what I mean? Um, I look at Paddy a lot. Yeah. Uh, and Paddy's a friend of mine, actually. And um, we do stuff together um, quite a lot, whenever we can sort of hook up. Um, I look to him a lot because his brain sort of works differently to mine in regards to um, his craft and how he, how he, just how he approaches things, how he approaches the videos and stuff. The process, yeah. exactly. So, yeah, Paddy's, Paddy's, I'd say, a big inspiration for me. And it's been a massive help to me. Um, 
I try not to look too much at other food people because I don't want to... Like, especially a lot of people get... I've got a friend in... Uh, sorry, I'm going from one subject yeah, no, to the no, next. No, so I've got a friend in Vietnam. He's like the biggest person in Vietnam doing what I'm doing. Like the biggest farang in Vietnam doing food called Max McFarlane. And... Um, He's great. He's a, he's amazing. He's one of the only people I actually watch. I, I like I really like I watched before I knew him. Basically, before I met him, I'd watch him and watch his programs and stuff. And um, he gets leveled at him. Oh, you like you want to be Mark Williams? Like be level Mark Williams? And I'm like, he's got like half a million subscribers. He's not like a small channel. But I think if you watch too much, especially like Mark, because Mark's like the top number one. A lot of I see a lot of vloggers wanting to get into doing the food stuff and they end up kind of copying him where you kind of start, not just Mark, anyone, if you watch someone too much, you start like um, taking on the way they speak, taking on yeah. their, their mannerisms. It's hard not to. So I try not to watch anything until... And then it takes you away from your character and who exa- you even exactly, were. And then exactly. you forget who you were. Because I probably did that when I first started. Looking back, I was probably trying to be Mark Williams. Well, it's kind of like, do, do you play poker ever? Badly, yeah. Badly, okay. I, I used, I, I think I'm pretty good, but... yeah. I remember there was a time I was really good and I read a fucking poker book and it destroyed my game. (laughs) I'm like, I I can never go back. And it's just because you you start to learn things like you kind of have a natural way about going about it. Mm. And then you take on processes that could be applied to YouTube, let's say. And you, and then once they're in your head, you can never get them out. And you're like, well, I have to do it that way now. When when essentially (laughs) if you just did it the organic way and never changed, exactly, it's going to, it's going to be more unique. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for our audience watching that might not be familiar with you, if there was like one video that it doesn't even have to be your most popular, something that you would direct them to um, on your YouTube channel to really understand not not something special about the food, but about you and that experience and that place and that time. What would you recommend to them? And can you talk about that? I think uh, that's difficult. I've got a few. I've got a lot that I really don't like and I can't watch, but I've got um, <laughs> I've probably got four or five that I really, really like. Um, one of which was uh, I was saying earlier I said when I was talking about that perfect storm and I said I went up to Nakon Panom which is a yeah a town sort of um, it's bordering Laos but you can't cross there but I, I like is it ca- now or is it getting more is it Udon Tani area or more north yeah, it's down no it's further sa- it's the same it's the Mekong area so it's the Mekong river yeah uh, Udon Tani then above Udon Tani you've got Nong Kai Yep. Going into Vientiane is below that. So if you can't start coming down, I don't know. If Fo- yeah, fo- following it down south on the river. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You're going towards Ubon Ratchatani. So, so kind of e- still Isan, I guess. N- Northeast, yes, bang yeah. in the Isan. Yeah. Um, but I, w- the whole pandemic, I, I just wanted, I, I really wanted to go back to Lao and I couldn't. So I wanted to, I wanted to find the most Lao Thai town that I could find. I don't know if I found it in Nakon Panon, but you can see Lao. It's like, it's close. Like the, that stretch of the Mekong River is it's less than like the viewers can't see this, but here to the beachfront, right? It's less yeah. than that. You can hear the music from now on the other side, yeah. And you can see the difference. You get this boat trip up and down the river at five p.m. It goes up the Thai side, then up the Lao side, and you can just the difference between the Thai and La, Thai and Lao side is crazy. Even for like a small town in Isan, it's not like it's not like looking at Bangkok and Vientiane. Um, in terms I, of like infrastructure infrastructure develop- yeah 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 infrastructure basically yeah yeah it was just like it's like pure countryside on that side okay. and then this side is like semi, a, semi built up yeah. um, like a fishing village of, yeah, yeah yeah so but that was my probably my favourite video I did I went up there for like two days I'm not sure if that's because it coincided with um, with the sort of growth of the channel but um, I absolutely loved it that was my most um, surprising town that I've been to in Thailand. Is it know. that it's it's very closely tied to Lao? Like, are they are they speaking Lao? I mean, well, actually, I was surprised at how many people people spoke English there. Like, everyone spoke perfect English, which was quite strange. Um, why why do you think that was? Uh, one of my subscribers who's Thai, she said it's because there used to be an army base there. And I, I don't know, just yeah, just a lot of people there spoke English. Um, and it was just a really quaint town. It had a it's got like a thirteen kilometer cycle lane through the town along the Mekong River, and I just loved it. And uh, although my, that was like a year ago, so my tie was, my tie's not great now, but it was worse then. And, um, but you'll see this sort of interaction with the locals a little bit. Um, I think that was the, that was when I first started doing more sort of, it's before I used to just walk to a restaurant and say, I'm going to this restaurant and they sell this food. Mm. And that was the first 
when I started like sort of combining it with the travel aspects, so I'm sort of showing you a little bit of the town. I'm cycling, I'm meeting the locals. Because before I'd cut out the parts where I was speaking because I was too self-conscious to leave it in. Because I know people will be in the comments saying, that's not what you said. That's not what they said. Mm. Um, but then I thought, well, that's the only way to learn is to... Yeah, you're trying, to, you're trying your best to translate. Yeah, and then yeah. it actually helped. When people correct me, they're not, most people don't correct me in a nasty way. So it's, it's the only way I actually learn when I say, yeah. oh, you know. So well, I'd say the long-winded again way of me saying Nakon Panon probably. Now, I might have missed that part of the story. Now, have you been there before and you went back to do the live stream or that was your first time there? Oh, no, that was just, that was just there. Yeah, and yeah. what drove you to go there? Like, hey, like how do you pick uh, that on the map and decide got, to go? Um, well, as I said, I've just sort of, I've been to Nong Kai, which is like very close to Vientiane, the capital of Laos. So I could have gone back there, but I wanted something with more of a, I'm a well, so I go back, I'm obsessed with rivers, right? Yep. I love rivers. I'm, I, like there's something about them. It's almost like without sounding too corny, it's like something spiritual about being next to a river, especially the Mekong because it's like the lifeblood of Southeast Asia. Like when I'm in Luang Prabang in Laos, it's like there's nothing like it for me. I absolutely love it. Um, so I wanted somewhere that was on the Mekong River. I could see Laos, and also that had quite a large part of the Mekong River with some mountains in the background. Yeah, which yeah, was yeah. quite visual, which I could yeah. Go there, relax for a few days. Um, so it, it's not so much about the food of that part. It's more just no, no, no. And I know about the food up there. The food in that region uh, interests me because I'm like a f sort of like a food history nerd. Like yeah. I like how food ties. We were talking about this off um, on Instagram when you told me about the museum in town. Um, I love the, the up there. There's a lot of Thai Vietnamese food. So we're like the, the Vietnamese mm -hmm. have come in for like uh, since like the 15th century, but. Um, which is heavily influenced the food. Um, and there's dishes that are almost identical to Vietnam, but there's a couple that aren't. But you can see their origins when you go to Vietnam. So like when I went to Vietnam, I'm like, oh, this is Wei Jab Yuan, the original one. And this is this. Yeah, and you can you can see that. I mean, e even in Thailand, and mm. uh, I lived in China for six years. Yeah, yeah. So you start to see even the Chinese dishes yeah, as yeah. they come in here and then they kind of get they get a little bit hybrid. Like, for example, you get the Thai dim sum compared to Hong Kong. Now, Thai tim dim sum's not. Yeah, no, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the one. Especially it? around here. It's yeah, like, it's not the one. And the funny thing about it is you always try it once a year, and then you're like, yeah, how the fuck did I get this yeah, again? Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. now, be, be, um, with your, your passion and love for Lao, you're saying you've been to Lao, if, so, and your passion for rivers, have you been to Von Vien? Yeah, I worked yeah. there for about two weeks. Oh, fuck. How are you even alive? But, you know, that, no, but this is, <laughs> but, like, oh, no, really, how am I alive here? Because yeah. I, I got, um, I think I got typhoid when I was there as well. Like, quite, like I had a, quite a serious, like, were you just doing like that backpacker? How can I backpacking, stay? Right? How can I yeah, stay? Like I was, yeah, yeah. I worked in PP pee -pee for a little bit in the bars. Just you, wherever I was going, I was you wearing the the, uh, the beer can. I uh, I, yeah, you remember the low on the I survived. Oh, no, you gym. know how they wear the uh, oh the beer can. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> yeah, I didn't go that far. No, no, no. no. Those uh, guys, you see some of those guys. Yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. buddy, you gotta go. There was, there was one guy from Canada, and he'd been there for like I think he wanted to do a year, so he'd been there for like 348 days or something. When I was in there. Bon just, just like, uh, on a chair all day. Just yeah, in Vang Vien. Yeah, because they were smoking opium yeah, there. Yeah. When I went, it was when they still had all the zip lines and stuff. So, like, they, like, um, oh, crashed, sh yeah. on the river. On the river. What year was that then? Jeez. 2009? 2009. Okay, so 2008, that's, 2009. That's when they ended it, when the Australian guy Yeah, no, they ended it around 2011, I think, because we'd been back. So, we went back. I remember I took my wife there. Great date. So, um,. <laughs> And we met in like 2011 in Sydney or 2010. It was still running, but all the zip lines had gone. And then it soon that the Australian government yeah, stepped in. But when I was there, it was carnage. Like some of the river was only as deep as that table. And we're flying off zip lines yeah. and spinning off the edge. Like my job was just to give out as much whiskey as possible. Like Thai, yeah. Lao Kao. And um, I remember saying to the guy, like, how can we just give this out? Like it's water. And then he like, he typed in how much it was on Kip on the county cloud and I worked out it was about 30 baht a bottle for the bottle so I was using it to like disinfect people's wounds and stuff like on their heads because people were coming out drunk and just be like oh yeah yeah and their heads just split open oh, it was madness I was yeah, there for like that, two weeks yeah that, I think I went there I'm gonna say 2000 uh wait no from here Ah, 2016-17. Okay. How was it? Yeah. Uh, well, no, it, they, they had the river thing going. Yeah, yeah. But it was just two bars, no mm. zip lines, and one day one bar's on and the other day the other yeah, bar's yeah, on. Yeah. But it was just kind of like... Chilled. It was just novelty. They're like, well, 
You've made it this far. We got to give you something. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the best part about it was like you kind of get there and realize there's no party. It's kind of finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I was. I must have been like 30, 31, 36 now. But yeah, yeah. yeah. And then eventually you just give up and you're like, all right, fuck it. Uh, let's just yeah. get on the tube and float back home. Yeah, yeah. The maddest thing for me it was like so one day I looked up and I was like, what? Are we? I can't. Don't know if we can swear on this. Yeah, yeah. What are we doing here? Like I look at the backdrop and it's the most amazing. Those cast limestone cliffs everywhere the most beautiful natural landscape and there's just carnage on the river and i'm just thinking to myself like what are we doing here? you like, just push that oh, sorry yeah, yeah. like what are we actually doing here you know yeah it's honest i i can't remember a thing no. <laughs> i was there so i was trying i, I went to Va vientiane mm -hmm. uh, so i took the flight from phuket to bangkok to udantani took the bus hopped across got to vientiane late at night 11 p.m Knew mm. I was getting the hell out of there. There's nothing to do there. No, right? no, 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 no. Took the bus to Von Vienne the next morning, the mini bus. Little trick to do if you have the money, just book three seats and then you get all three Lie in the down. back. That's my little trick. Lie and down. then I lay there and people try to get on. I'm like, sorry, bud. No, this is I paid for these. And it, that changes the trip. Yeah, yeah. It's a little more expensive, they've, but it's not. They've got the train now, the high speed train. From it, uh, Vientiane to Von Vienne's 45 minutes. And then to Luang Prabang, we. Basically, we just went there with the with the my. I went to do a video of the train. Yeah, and then we got there, and you couldn't book a ticket because it was like time. It was a, it was like a Thai holiday, so there was it was packed with. When did they finish that train? Uh, it was about six months ago, I think. I didn't even know. Ah, wow. So from Luang Prabang all the way to Vientiane, stopping in Vang Vien is an hour and forty five minutes. Genius. Exactly right. Does it keep going up to like? Uh, Goes up to uh, uh, hoi, uh, hoi, hoi, yeah, hoi, hoi, like yeah, the train goes past, and then it goes up to the border at. Like just before Kuling. the Chang, the does it go to the Chang Rai border? There's a there's a town there, Hoi, no. Hoi oh, no. uh, I forget the name. Wangsi or something. Something like this. That no, goes up to Kunming in China. It goes all. But the it way. isn't connected yet, but it will be connected to Kunming. That's insane. Yeah. I wonder why they built that. Like, Bowling is it Bowling or something? I can't. China I'm, built it. China, oh. China Lao Railway, China's oh, first. China. So what are they extracting? There's something in there, right? Okay. But mate, I'll, t I'll tell you what. For six hundred baht, best six hundred baht I ever spent. Anyway. Oh man, it's that drive is about five and a half. No, it might have been eight hours. Eight hours yeah. Something so, between Vientiane to Von Vienne was like five or eight hours. It was supposed to be five, but like sometimes like you better landslide and you're like, I just had my box of Valiums yeah. and I'm like, oh minibus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, done. Wake me up when we get there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, and then I went and the Luang Prabang and the drive's pretty rough. That was horrible. That was one of the worst things I've yeah. ever done. So it's to Luang Prabang, that bit Ugh. from there to Vien, uh, Vang Vien. Oh my god! Well, I did. I took the one after. I went from Luang Prabang up. It's twelve or fifteen hours to the basically the Chiang Rai border. I forget mm -hmm. the name of this town. Hoi something. I know what you mean. It's. Uh, I want to say Hoi Sap, but that's just the restaurant over there. It's definitely not that. It's <laughs> right opposite Chiang Kong, and I know that because yeah. I just went to Chiang Kong. To get some noodles. But that place there, that's the best place. This border town to Chiang Rai, forget the name of it, but they have a, a like an expedition there. It's called the Gibbon Experience. Yeah, Gibbon Experience. Yeah, I've done have it. Have you yeah. done it? Yeah, yeah. That's I've been in Asia twelve years. That's, that's the great, best. That's the best thing I've ever done. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. for like an adventure. Oh yeah, my yeah, God. yeah. It's cool, like, isn't it? And I, I would, I would go do it again. It's mm. been about since two thousand seventeen, and I'd like to go maybe do the go two or three again. day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got a bit lucky. It wasn't raining, but I saw some guys, like, I was walking carefully. And if it's raining, like, some guys were just pulling leeches out of their boots. Oh. But I think that's because they had these, they thought they had their army boots on. So they're just <laughs> going in the mud. And it's like, those little fuckers. Commando man, style, yeah. They don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess. You pro do you do you talk too much on your channel about like the Laotian food and visiting Laos? Have you done a few? Uh, I've done a, a little bit. Um, that's more of like an exploration for me because um, I don't. I like to go to places where I don't know what I'm doing. Like, um, so I go to Vietnam a lot, semi a lot, um, as much as I can since the situation we keep talking about. And Laotian food, yes, um, it's easier for me in Laos because I can just speak in Thai when I'm there. And they'll just answer in Lao. I try and speak in Lao, but I get like tied up. What isn't it? Lao and Isan is the basically the same. Sabai sabai di, sabai di ba. Sabai di is like the hello. Right? Yeah, Sabai di. Yeah, where is here it? it's still Sabai di mai. Sabai di mai, like how are you? So, yeah. And in so in Lao, it's Sabai di is hello, and Sabai di ba is how are you? Yeah, I noticed they use mai. this way more frequently than like because yeah, yeah. we don't. They we kind of even hello. We still say Swati Cup. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, swati cup, swati cup. And like when you say goodbye, you still say swati cup. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like 7 Eleven. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, there it's sabai D. Yeah. yeah. When. So Sorry, continue. No, I'm saying so. It's, it's, it, I like the fact that I can speak a little bit and I get to explore a bit more. But the food is so similar to Isan that, okay. like, you'd have to go to, um, like, sort of more rural areas in the north and stuff to get anything that's vastly different from what you're getting in Isan, really. Probably everything, because if it's on the Mekon. Yeah, yeah. Like, you got it, like. Because it would have uh, all been the same place. Right. Before, like, a thousand. The, is it a thousand islands? About that. 4,000 islands. 4,000, 4, islands. something like 8, 000, 4, this. 8,000, 4,000. This is, what's that's that place Don, called? Don, that's, that's far down in Paxay. Yeah, Paxay, that's the So place. I went there. Um, Cross the border into Paxay. Yeah, I went, actually, f how did, I don't remember how I got there. I flew there. Flew, okay. I flew there from what's Bangkok. It, what's it like there? It's worth it? It's or? great, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great, yeah. The, 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 the 4,000 islands itself is a bit, it's good. Just sort of get like a Mekong hotel on the riverside. And then get on a boat and go around and stuff. They've got these little dolphins. It was all right. The boat trip. It was nice to be there. I just like being places. I don't but do the, stuff. The when town I'm is interesting or? Not really. Paxe is like, uh, if you didn't find Vientiane very interesting, you're not going to find Paxe very interesting. But they've got loads of um, like old Khmer ruins and stuff there. There's stuff to do mm. um, around the town. There's like uh, some statues. Yeah, there's these old ruins, a little bit like Angkor Wat, but on a smaller scale, which I think, I can't remember what they told us, but. Um, I'm not very good for stuff like that. When you say, what's, what can you do in this town? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, I don't do anything. I just eat, look for coffee and look for bars. So that's, all, that's basically all I do. So um, I don't really know much about. Let's, um, I'm, I'm just going through a, a whole book on the history of Thailand. So like, ah. I'm so dialed in now. Like, the reason for that is like, I'm never leaving Thailand. So yeah, I might yeah. as well, like, I mean, the history of Canada is like, I mean, UK's got sandwiches older than my country. What the fuck is the history of Canada? I'm not going to, like, how, it, yeah, it's about 100 years ago. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Your grandpa, the father, could probably have told you at the yeah, dinner yeah. table the whole history of Canada. But um, now I'm going through this book, and it's really interesting in understanding, like, how the Chimera came over here. Mm. I mean, they're much older than, yeah, than yeah, the yeah, Thais yeah. themselves. All right, guys, so this is a two-part episode. You just watched part one. Uh, part two is going to air on on Thursday at 6 p.m. Bangkok time. Check it out. Don't forget to like and subscribe.